Oh, we need to change the battery. looking at the sky so what you guys can see behind me is what appears to be a tiny house <laughs> but it's not a tiny house it's actually going to be a Hawaiian shaved ice trailer so a very good friend of mine is actually building this to bring to birthday parties and events and carnivals and stuff like that and so what we're tasked with on this one and what I'll do is I'll show you once we get it up in the air but basically this was just a tiny trailer it's a single axle, 3,500 pound axle, and the trailer frame itself is sufficient for what he's trying to do, but we just want to make sure that this thing is going to last because obviously, you know, with stuff like this, if you're towing it across backyards and fairgrounds and things of that nature, these little trailers have a tendency to break off the spring mounts where the axle actually connects to the frame of the trailer. So we're going to do some positive reinforcement with... <laughs> telling it it's a good boy and it's we're proud of it but no actually we're going to do some reinforcements with some steel to help counteract the side to side movement of the axle we're also going to do a couple other things that i'll show you now um this trailer is kind of old so it has an old school jack and it's got the old school uh you know trailer connector it's all kind of rusty and nasty so we got a brand new one of those right over here that we're gonna weld on we got a brand new jack we got a brand new set of lights we got to rewire this thing but for right now what i'm gonna do is get it up in the air and i'll show you guys exactly what it is we're going to do to the frame so let's go over what it is we're going to be doing with this thing so now as you can see this frame is literally a three inch um c channel frame which is pretty strong i mean it's going to handle the load that we're wanting to handle with this trailer which is ultimately going to be about three thousand pounds in total including the weight of the trailer. So we're not over exceeding the weight of the axle by any means. However, what I wanna do is you can see that there's just some angle iron here that holds the floor up. Um, there's one in the front, one right there. There's one right here. And then ultimately in the rear, the bumper handles you know, most of the load. And then there's some extra tabs right in here that hold everything together. So what we're gonna be doing is when this trailer turns, or you're moving on the highway and you're running around a corner, it will put some side loading on this axle. Now, side loading on these axles is usually not a big deal if you're carrying an ultralight camper because most times the campers only weigh about 1,500 pounds and that's fully loaded with all your cargo ready to go. Now, this thing is gonna have an ice cooler in it. It could potentially be full of ice, water, uh, the machinery to run everything and everything like that. So what we're gonna wanna do is you can see how small these attachment points are on this axle. So you literally have it just welded with this little piece of uh, U-channel and then the spring is, is bolted to that. So what we're gonna end up doing is we got some one by two box tubing that we're gonna run from here all the way over to the other side at both areas of these mounting points for the um, leaf springs. And then ultimately what we're gonna do is on the front one here, we're gonna come off of what we just put in there and we're gonna attach to here to give this some rigidity. And then back here, we don't have a whole lot of space because this has to actually rotate backwards. So we can't put anything right on this face. We're gonna have to go back here. But by doing that, we'll also run a brace up to our piece of steel there so that we have some side loading capability here. Now. What that's also going to do is give this frame a little bit more rigidity so that it's not moving around and doing whatever else. And truthfully, what's nice is I was worried about this section here. This section here is where the hitch comes through the front bar and attaches to the rest of the frame. Now, a lot of times you don't see 
plates like this on these frames. It's 100% almost always just shittily welded there. And we won't get demonetized because I don't even think that's a word. But poorly mounted here and they crack and they break and they do everything else. But luckily this one was built really, really well. So we don't have to worry about that. Now we may also come in here. We're going to keep these racks because I think he wants to put a generator on them. We're going to get rid of the propane rack. And I'm going to put another piece of steel in here just to give us a little bit more strength up in the tongue area. And then, like I said, we're going to be cutting off this original hitch and putting in a new one and also a new jack. And we'll make sure that these chains are welded properly so that they don't come apart. And just some basic things, you know, maybe, no, we don't need to. See, they even went as far as to put a plate in here to strengthen that up. So this trailer was actually built really, really well. And then on top of that, after we do all that, we are going to take out all this old wiring for the lights. We're gonna put some brand new wiring in it. Um, we're gonna to try to rewire the brakes and see if we can't get some wires up front for the braking system. So that in the future, when he wants to run the seven pin connector with a trailer brake controller and all that, he can just to have some extra added safety for when the sucker's loaded down. Because he's going to be towing it with an F-150, I'm going to need a little bit more extra braking, especially with, you know, a decent amount of weight behind it. But here's a little something that comes up every now and then. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it because the GoPro distorts things, but this axle is actually bent upwards. And it's supposed to be. The reason it's supposed to be is because when you load this thing down, this actual ax axle will actually straighten itself back out. It's put in there specifically so that you can load this thing down and that axle will, you know, get to a point where it's straight versus if it wasn't bent this way, it would definitely bend that way when you put the weight on it. It's just a way to save. All right, so now with all of that being said, and you guys know exactly what we're gonna do, you might be saying to yourself, but listen, why are you only putting two beams in there? Why are you not reinforcing the entire frame and making it bulletproof? Well, the problem is, is we are on a budget when it comes to weight. We only have a 3,500 pound axle. Currently in its state that it's in, by the way the lift handled it, I would imagine it probably weighs about 1,200 pounds. Now it doesn't have walls in it yet. It doesn't have any of the equipment in it yet. None of the flooring, none of the ceiling, none of the exterior, you know, accoutrements that are going to be on it when it's done. And we're going to be pushing pretty close to the weight limit of this 3,500 pound axle. We don't want to get there. We want to have, you know, a couple of hundred pounds of leeway so that we're not breaking stuff left and right. So we're doing very minimal reinforcements in very important places to make sure that this thing stays together, but to also make sure that we're not adding an extra you know, 150, 200 pounds of steel into it, which is going to affect the axle, the tires, the wheels, the brakes, all of that stuff. So we gotta be super careful. Now, when we bought the metal, we went to Logan Steel. Go check them out. Of course, you know, all of us Connecticut boys love those guys. We're there for every steel need. When I went there, we weighed out the steel and we're gonna be putting about an extra 40 pounds into this thing with just those two braces. So if you can imagine if we brace the whole thing, if, if only two pieces of steel are 40 pounds, you're talking possibly adding 150, 200 pounds, 300 pounds by the time you get done gusseting everything. And we can't do that. We don't have that option. We don't have that budget. So we're going to have to be very careful with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start measuring everything up. We're gonna get the steel cut. I'll bring you guys back in and we'll probably put you up on the tripod and we'll weld everything together. I'll show you how I'm gonna make the gusseting and all that other stuff and uh, we should be good to go. So I'll see you in a minute.
So this is how we're going to gusset it. We have these pieces here, and what we're basically going to do is you stick that up in there, like so, and you end up with a nice little gusset right to this mount, and ultimately this mount is going to be that much stronger because now we're tied into the rest of the frame. Instead of just being on the lower half of the frame here, we now have basically three points of contact, which will help strengthen this entire thing significantly. All right, so like you saw, we gusseted this in this way because this moves this way, back and forth. So we can't impede that movement and it doesn't move that far back, but we can't, you know, gusset to this face. But now here's the reason why we want to gusset this one especially and why I did it the way that I did it is because with the length of this shackle, when it moves side to side, it has a lot of leverage. 
Now these will give some, and there is small bushings in here that will give just a little bit, but when this thing, you know, tightens up and strengthens up, and it twists, it's got a ton of leverage to be able to twist this whole bracket. So what we wanted to do is make sure that we had both the pull and the push forces taken care of. Hence why we did this on an angle this way is because in either this direction or that direction, it has strength. And now we welded it top, bottoms, inside, and all around. And we got to clean a little bit of it up. You know, we weren't going for beauty on this one. We were going for function. Same thing goes for this side. Same scenario. And then in the front where we had a little bit more of an option, we could make it look a little bit nicer where we have an actual, you know, 90 degree. And yeah, I didn't weld the bottoms of it. And the reason I didn't weld the bottoms of it is because there is a hole right here and there will get water and all sorts of other stuff into that hole. And you need to have a brief or small spot. And I don't know how well you can tell, but there is a little bit of a gap in there for water to drain out so that we don't get any sort of rust or rot or anything over time, which is going to be amazing. And then we'll probably come in here too and seal this up with some silicone, get some silicone in there just to seal so we don't get any water inside these tubes, which would be bad. So we're gonna take all the precautions on this one, guys, and we'll make it super nice. But now that we've got the frame itself strengthened, we have something for the floor to sit on. When these beams flex, which they will with the weight that's going on the vehicle, when these flex, they're gonna drop down and they're gonna to touch right here, which is perfect because the floor is actually bowed up a little bit right now. So we'll get a nice, you know, settle onto this beam right here. He can even screw through the floor into this beam to drag everything down and, and really, you know, just level it all out and strengthen it all up. But now what we're gonna do is we are going to cut off this old hitch. So this old style hitch, I mean, you can, it's a pretty good design as far as, you know, security goes, but it's just old and it doesn't work all that well. And we could spend an hour cleaning this thing up and lubricating it and it would be halfway decent. But I mean, once it's closed, it's damn near impossible to get open. It's a little bit worn out. So we want to make sure we have a nice fresh hitch on here so that it doesn't pop off going down the road. So we're going to cut this off. We're going to put the new one on. We'll put the new jack in. And then I think we're going to call it for the night. Alrighty, so we got our new hitch welded on. <clears throat> and I'm inhaling smoke like crazy, so bear with me. We got another brace, a little uh, two and a half by one brace going across the, the hitch itself. We got rid of the propane tank area. We actually welded the chains in a much better location than they were before, which was underneath and only tack welded basically. So that's all good. Now we just have to put the jack in and then wire this thing up and it'll be good to go. Well, the Hawaiian shaved ice trailer is done. We got our new lights on. Got our license plate in the right spot with a new light. We did all of our wiring. Got all that stuff nice and good. Everything is tied up nice. Goes through all the existing stuff. We got it nice and loose underneath any metal so it doesn't rub and uh, rub through. We got everything painted up. So our nice new supports are in there. Should keep this axle under this thing, no problem. That's all done. We got all our wiring tucked up nice under the hitch. Our new jack is installed. The new hitch is installed. We got the trailer wiring all grounded and ready to go. So that's ready to plug in. We tested all the lights out, they work. So there it is guys. Everything that, uh, that we were trying to do on this, we got done. So stuff like this is what I really like to do. You know, this is different. This is super different. For the last couple of weeks now, this thing's been sitting outside. Everybody's like, whoa, would you get a tiny house? And it's just hysterical. It draws attention. It draws really good attention. And I kind of enjoy doing stuff like this because it just makes the job a lot much more fun. You know, you guys see me doing a lot of Jeeps. 
a lot of Silverados, a lot of Toyotas. This is something super different and we're super happy to be a part of it because it's going to be really, really neat when it's done. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video of the tiny house slash Hawaiian shaved ice machine. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great night.